Hello everyone. Let's keep exploring Halloween for our Art Starts Explorers Halloween special. If you've joined us in the past, you might recognize the mini gallery that uh, hasn't been, hasn't appeared in Explorers for a little while, but I thought I'd bring it back out um, for this activity because for this activity, what we're going to try and explore um, is uh, a scary or a atmospheric scene. And so thinking about Halloween, um, usually the parties or the, or trick-or-treating um, or movies or books or, or all the things that you might read, watch, or enjoy around Halloween happen at night. And the reason for that is because um, the whole idea of nighttime is connected to sleeping. So what do you do sometimes when you sleep? Maybe you dream. Um, it's dark and so we can't always see everything. And if we depend on our sight to move around, and some people don't, but if you use your eyes to navigate or to walk or to move around the world, um, all of a sudden when we can't use our eyes, um, it can be scary or we cannot feel as confident. Um, and then our imagination can start to see things in the dark or we can um, start making up stories for the shadows that we see because we don't have all the information and so our brain fills in the blanks. And that's part of the fun of Halloween is that we, we don't know. It is fantasy. It is uh, for fun. It is just trying things out um, and, and uh, exploring fantasy. And so if you're, if you're going out trick-or-treating this year, I hope, I hope you are safe. But if you are not going out, uh, one of the fun ways that you could explore Halloween is transforming one of the spaces that you're going to be staying in um, at night um, and explore different ways that you can make um, a room or if you have a box, you could build a diorama or a scene in. Um, or, or like me, um, I have a bunch of pieces of foam core that I put on top of my cutting mat and all of a sudden it's transformed into a little room. And so there we can start exploring um, some of the ways that our, um, our brain interprets um, a space or an environment to be scary. What makes something scary or creepy or frightening or um, just nighttime and dark? And everybody feels a little bit different. I like Halloween scary because it's all for fun and I know that it isn't real. But for me, I don't read a lot of scary books or watch a, a lot of scary movies. But some people do and they like it just fine. So it's completely up to you how you explore um, scary things, um, frightening things, or just dark, atmospheric things. And so um, I'm going to explore by turning my micro gallery into a kind of scary space. Um, and to do that, first, I am going to uh, collect a couple of these things, and maybe you have a few of these things. And if you only have a few of these things, that's okay. Your space is going to look different than mine. Your space might be really big. Your space might be smaller than mine. Um, you might just be using your imagination to build a scary space, and that's completely up to you. So um, I'm gonna suggest if you can find some flashlights and if you don't have access to a flashlight, but you do have a phone or um, a tablet, um, you could use one of these to use their lights because usually what you can do is um, you can turn on the flashlight. Here, I'm just, ooh, haven't used <laughs> this device for a while. Here we go, I'm gonna swish down and turn on the there we go, flashlight. So I have a flashlight right there and you can't really tell because the light is on right now, but you can use, oh, there you go. You can kind of see the shadow over there. Um, and so you could use a device 
um, as a flashlight. And if you um, if you were feeling really safe and you had an adult um, and you had permission, and somebody was always watching um, a candle and you had a fire extinguisher, um, you could also you could also grab a candle. But I only I only suggest that um, if you have an adult. Um, and you do have a fire extinguisher because playing around with fire is um, not a good idea. Generally, we don't want to play with fire. We want to be safe with fire. So a flashlight is a better idea. Um, I've also suggested grabbing some cardboard, but really any kind of paper or material that is opaque, which means the light can't pass through it and it will make a shadow when you uh, shine light on it. Um, some fabric, so that could be a t-shirt, that could be a bed sheet, that could be a cloth. So depending on the size or environment that you are working in, so I'm working in the small environment, so I grabbed a couple of my painter rags um, that I have, and they don't have to be clean. They've got some paint on them. Um, they don't have to be white. They could be whatever color. Um, if you're working in a bigger space, maybe uh, you have a living room with a couch that you're going to transform into a scary space, or you are in a garage, or you are in a classroom, maybe you'll need some uh, bigger pieces, and, th and that's fine. So if you have some fabric, that's great. Um, some paper, just something that you can draw on, as usual. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can have writing on the back. It doesn't have to be uh, white, just any kind of paper. Mark making tools, that could be a marker, that could be a crayon, that could be a pencil, anything that marks up your page. And then if you have some, a pair of scissors. Um, I encourage you whenever possible to rip up paper, but because one of the things we're gonna be exploring is cardboard, um, I will still rip up some of my cardboard, some, but sometimes it can be easier um, and faster and sometimes safer if we use scissors. So if you have some of those, great. If you have all of those, great. If you have none of those, no problem. You can still follow along um, as we create a scary scene. Okay, so the first thing that I want to explore is the idea of light. And so remember how I said dark at the beginning when we're in the dark, sometimes our brain fills in certain things. Uh, if we can't see what's, what's happening, sometimes that can give us a feeling of uneasiness or um, maybe it makes us sleepy. Uh, we, if we depend on our eyesight, we can't necessarily see everything. Um, and so we have to make some guesses. And when things get dark, we really don't know. And the only thing that we can rely on are our ears, if we can use our ears, our hands, if we can use our hands, our smell, um, I guess our taste, but I wouldn't suggest walking around, you know, with your tongue hanging out. <laughs> but you know, uh, animals do that, right? If, if they're in the dark, they use their, their tongues and their noses to um, get information about uh, the world around them. And so what happens when we can't use our eyes uh, 100%? We need to use light. And so in the daytime, light comes from the sun. And which means that, so if the sun is in the sky, what direction does the light come from? Usually from above us. And even when we have lamps, usually when we have lights, uh, we, when we have uh, lights on the ceiling, even a desk lamp, uh, or at a desk if we're sitting there and there's a lamp, usually the light is above our eyes and falls down on a surface. And so when we see light casting shadow down, and so if you see a tree, here I'm actually, here I've got a piece of cardboard right now and I'm gonna put it in front of the light that I have here, right? So it's creating shadow and it's making some of these shadows darker downwards, down in that direction. It's making those shadows sharper because I'm, I'm uh, blocking some of the light there, right? Um, and so the light is coming this way and so the shadows are going this way. Well, what happens when we change it? What happens when the light isn't coming from above us? If you have access to a TV or a tablet, what happens when you turn off all the lights and you make the light come from you um, on, on the on, a, on an angle. And so I'm gonna take my cardboard TV over here. I'm gonna move it over here. And I'm gonna take that flashlight. Well, for me, I have, I have a, a phone and I'm gonna put it under my 
TV here to make it seem like the TV is on. And I'm going to turn off the light. So what do you think is going to happen? There you go. So the shadows, what do you notice? The shadows are really very dark and sharp in some places. It doesn't feel very natural. It doesn't feel super scary, but it doesn't feel um, like if the sun was shining, if the light was normally coming from beside us. So just turning on a TV and then um, with a video. So I just took, right, I took my little TV here and I put a light through it. But what if I was going to take a tablet and I was going to play a video on it? So here I've got, I've got one of my tablets here. And I'm going to play a movie that is just a fire. So it's a, a campfire. And so what happens when the light comes from below us uh, and then um, casts shadows upwards? So I'm going to turn off my flashlight here. What do you think is going to happen? Can you guess? All right. So first, even before I play the video, right, this feels scarier. Not only does the light, you know, there isn't a lot of light, but you see how the shadows are really long now. They're casting a long shadow rather than it being sharp and tight. And we can't, we can't necessarily even see the thing that's making the shadow. In fact, the shadow is the thing that is the most bright. And so just by, uh, just by changing where the light comes from, we are starting to create a scarier place. But remember, we're just all having fun, right? We're going to explore this together a step at a time. And if at any time you feel uh, uncomfortable or you don't want to feel scared anymore, just turn the lights back on. Okay, so let's, let's turn this video on. There we go. What happens to the shadows? What do you notice? The shadows have a life of their own now. They're moving, right? And so all that was moving was the video here. It wasn't, it wasn't any of the, 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 the things around. It wasn't any of the, uh, the bodies or the furniture or what have you. It was just the video. It was just the light source. And so if you had a flashlight and you pointed it um, from the ground or you set it on the ground and then you moved things in front of the flashlight, or if you um, have that tablet and you play um, a video, try different videos. What happens when you play different kinds of uh, videos? What, how do the shadows change? If you don't have a tablet, you can take your flashlight and uh, you could use your fingers over top of it. Even just looking at my fingers with the light underneath it, there's something kind of creepy, kind of scary feeling about the light coming from under and casting. So the shadows are towards us right? So rather than the sun pointing down and the light showing me the top of my hands all of a sudden, which we never see, right? That's the other thing that makes um, light from below seem so scary is because it's very unnatural. It's very not normal for lights to come from below. And if you take that, that same whole flashlight thing, have you, ever, have you ever done that and you've looked at your face in the mirror? Ooh, look at how creepy that is. So with both the lights and my flashlight. Uh, I, I have this, uh, this doll that I've had for a really, really long time uh, from when I was growing up. Um, and so there's my, my doll here. And so if you were to take that flashlight and you were to shine it up at them, right? It's really not normal for a light to come from below. It's not usual that you would see those shadows on the neck or on the upper chest or do you see along the cheeks? Normally what you would see is the light like this, right? Isn't that weird? Just by changing the direction that I shine the light, it makes, it makes different shadows and it makes us feel different. And it seems um, less scary when the light is from above versus when the light is from below. Isn't that interesting? So just changing the direction of the light. So wherever you are making, whatever space that you are going to transform, uh, whether it's going to be um, 
a Halloween party with maybe you and your friends or your adults or whoever you're hanging out with on Halloween, right? What happens if you just have a shadow party where for a half hour you all walk around with flashlights and see what kind of interesting shadows you can make, right? Can you make it look kind of scary? Can you make it look um, creepy? And uh, that's one way, right, by just to taking the light and doing it from the, the bottom. Okay, so that's lights and shadows. Let's, let's keep exploring. And, and there are lots of different ways that you can explore um, light and shadow. We did a, um, an Explorers video, another workshop, um, a couple of months ago. And so you can go back and you can check that out if you wanted to keep exploring um, other art making videos. Maybe as part of your Halloween party, you could go back and check out um, our shadow episode. Or just keep exploring yourself, right? So one of the other things um, that I was talking about was, uh, was fabric before. Why would I bring up fabric when I'm talking about creepy or scary spaces? Hmm? Why do you think? Have you ever watched a, a scary movie or a, um, a, a haunted house? Sometimes when you walk through or when you when you get to, maybe you've gone to an amusement park and, or um, maybe you've gone to a friend's house or a family's house or maybe your classroom put on a, um, a haunted house one year. Sometimes what they'll do is, is that they'll take sheets or they'll take fabric and they'll cover things in a space. Well, if you think about it, what's, what's one thing that usually wears a sheet that is very Halloween-y? Oh, yes, look at that. I didn't even mean to. The stains there kind of look like eyes, right? Ooh, right, I made a ghost. And ghosts are usually uh, portrayed or usually um, we see ghosts when we, when we draw them or we, or we make them. They're usually made out of a sheet. And the reason that that works so well is because we don't know what's under the sheet. It's the mystery. It's the surprise of what's underneath that makes it scary, that makes it something that we don't know. And so our brains have to kind of guess. Um, and so what we can do is in our space, we don't necessarily have to turn everything into, um, into ghosts, but what we can do is that using any fabric that we have, we can cover the things in our space with sheets or with fabric and transform the space from being objects that we know and we can recognize to being kind of these shapeless forms that we don't necessarily recognize. And then when we start playing with light, check out all of these folds. This is called draping fabric. When you place fabric over, over something and you get all these cool creases and folds. So even if you only have one sheet, or one piece of material, try putting it over top of different objects. See what happens. See how the fabric drapes. Then bring your flashlight or your tablet or your light source over and see how changing the light on the draped material changes the atmosphere or changes how you feel about an object. Even if you know what was under that object was a standing light, all of a sudden, when you cover it with a sheet, becomes something unknown. It becomes something different. Here, I'm going to fold this one more time because this ends up being a really big, big sheet. There you go. Put that back over there. Look at this. Look at all these cool lines and shadows and shapes now just by putting fabric over top of it. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to, I'm going to move, I'm going to move my wizard for a second. Come on over here, wizard. Great. And then, you know what, I'm going to put some fabric on top of my big pillow that my, my wizard was chilling out on. And so you could put it over top of your couch. I'm going to take my, my, my sticky here with my name on it because you know this, this voice that you are reading and hearing is K. Okay, so we got a bit more space. So I'm going to take that. You know what, I don't even think I'm going to unfold this one either, but maybe I'll just want to make sure it's got some cool some cool folds to it that are a little different. And you don't have to just throw it. You, you could place it. You could start folding. You could pick up the fabric. You could put other things under the fabric. So if it's on the couch and you cover the couch and it still really looks like a couch, maybe place the pillows in different places. 
If you have stuffed animals, stuff the stuffed animals underneath the blanket. What kind of shapes can you make just by covering the space with fabric? I have one more light over here and I'm going to cover it too. You know what? For this one, I'm not even going to cover this one. I'm just going to turn it around. Right? All of a sudden it goes from information to we're not sure what that space is going to be. And then I'm going to cover, you know what, I will cover it, but I'm going to cover it and the light at the same time. So it's got this kind of long, there we go. Yeah. Okay. I want to make sure we can't see any of it. There we go. So that one looks completely different from the other ones. Oh, look at, look at all these folds over here now. So just by covering, right? We, we didn't do anything magical or special and we haven't changed the lights even yet, but even by itself, even though we know there's a TV under here, we know there's a big cushion under here and we know there's a light over here. If we left the room or if we did all of this and then we invited somebody in, they'd have to think about it. Even if they'd been in the room a hundred times before, they'd have to think about it and have to try and use their memory to remember what everything is. And sometimes the brain, even though it knows that there's a TV under there, maybe it sees these two dots here then it sees this fabric and all of a sudden that fabric becomes a ghost. All right, let's keep going. Let's, let's turn off the lights. Let's turn on our flashlight here. I'm going to bring my wizard back in here so that my wizard can be in my scary scene. And let's turn on my flashlight and then turn down the lights. All right. So this is the light from above. I mean, it's still it's still got that that scary because you can um, you can see that um, we don't we don't know what's in the fabric and everything that I said before. It still looks we're unsure. But what happens when we change the direction of the light? Now it's down below. Oh, look at those shadows! Look at the shadows that it makes, and not just on the wall. But look at the shadows in the fabric. Look at the shadows of my wizard in front of the fabric, right? Just by changing the direction of light and a bunch of fabrics, and then you can change, you could change the folds in the fabric, right? You could just move the fabric around and see what changes when you move the fabric. What happens, right? It's always, it's always good when we're exploring. What happens if I... Oh yeah, look at all these shadows now, same thing. Cool. All right, I'm gonna turn the light back on. All right, so we have covered our spaces and who knows where this is now. Maybe, maybe that living room or that classroom has turned into um, a snowy hill or uh, a room that hasn't been in for, or, and nobody's been in for a long time and they covered everything with sheets so that it didn't get dusty. Or maybe you're in a laundry room, a, a, a haunted laundry room, right? You can make up the story as you go along. Okay, so one of the other things that you can do um, in these spaces, so if you have the ability to hear, you could turn on some um, scary noises, or you could turn on some repetitive noises, or you could set up your scene so that it looks creepy, and you've done all of these things, and yeah, everybody's agreeing that it's creepy. Try putting on some happy music. Does the scene still look, does the room still look creepy? Does it still feel scary? Or does the music that you can hear change that? If you don't want to listen to music, or you can't hear music, what happens if you bring in some textures? So you sit in the room that you all agree is scary. You turn down the lights. You've all got your flashlights. Maybe everybody has a flashlight and it's pointed up at their face, right? That unnatural light pointing out underneath here. I'm going to bring my, my doll back in here. I'm going to turn on the light so you can imagine this. Here we go, right? So you've got, that, you've got the flashlight under your chin. And, oof, and the shadows are, are really um, creepy. And you're sitting in the circle and you turn on your favorite pop song. Or maybe you all just make 
popping noises. Oh, sorry, this was going to be touch. So sure, you could do all the sounds. But what if uh, about textures? So what if you all sat in the circle with that light and somebody passed around an object that you all had to feel? What if you made up a story? You, you can't look at the, the material or the item that you're passing around, um, but you're just going to make it up based on what you feel. Um, and there's a whole bunch of Halloween games that some people play, but you don't have to go with the spaghetti or the peeled grapes because that's, you know, that's food and um, you, you might not want to uh, waste food. And, and also because during these times um, of uh, where we, we are in a pandemic and we want to take care of ourselves and we don't necessarily want to waste food, but we also don't want to pass around things that um, might be a little bit slimy and gross. Maybe it's just something normal. Maybe it's a feather. Maybe it's that t-shirt that you didn't uh, put over top of something. Maybe it's a piece of candy. All, all that's required is you pass it around and everybody kind of makes up a story or talks about how they feel when they're touching that in the scary or creepy environment. And uh, sometimes just where you're sitting or how you're sitting or how you feel when you're sitting can completely change how your senses perceive those things and try it out. Try passing around a whole bunch of different things. So that's sounds and textures. We had lights and shadow. We had uh, the unknown, so uh, hiding things, and then we have to guess. We had uh, the draping of fabric. We had all these different things that we could explore as far as a, um, a, scary, a scary room. But I wanted to do one last thing before we, uh, we moved out of the gallery and we tried something else for our Halloween special, which is if you're in a space and you're not going out um, trick-or-treating this year, why not turn your space into your neighborhood? And so whether you've draped things all around, um, if you take some cardboard and you start cutting out different house shapes or building shapes, if you're in, um, if you live in some condos or you live in a complex that has um, a whole bunch of square buildings, if you, um, if you live in a large building with lots of windows, um, if you are staying with a friend and their house is a certain kind of shape, you go for a walk and you could start going out and looking. But you could build yourself different shapes that look like the, um, the buildings in your area. And here, just because I've got this smaller space here, I'm going to move some of my cool draped objects out. And you might not have that ability. In the room that you're, um, you're in, maybe there's a couch and you can't move that couch. And that's fine. There's no reason why you can't put um, these cardboard pieces around the couch. Um, there's, there's no reason why you can't work small like me and find yourself a box and a flashlight and build the neighborhood in, in the, um, in the box. Okay. So I have this piece of cardboard and you know what? I want it to stand up. So I'm going to make this leg here. go and I didn't tell us to have any tape but I did say scissors so how can I make this stand up with just scissors I need to make it a little bit longer another cut there we go yeah that should make it stand up it's not perfect but it doesn't have to be we're just trying things out. There we go. Okay, so it's kind of lopsided. <laughs> Here, I'm going to fold that so that it sits a little bit better on the on the ground. Fold it over so that it, I can tell. Oh yeah, this is very different. I'm going to cut off those pieces. There we go. So now it should be about the same size. Uh, I'm going to put my leg back on. Now the leg's too long. There we go. All right. And I went into the recycling bin and I just found some cardboard here. So I don't have to worry about doing lots of cuts or making uh, a mistake every once in a while. That's fine. Oh, I put it in upside down. Oh, whatever. That's fine. It doesn't matter. So there we go. So maybe that's two apartment buildings, right? That kind of square. 
Um, here I'm going to do another one. Maybe I'll do uh, one that's actually just an iconic house shape with that, um, the gabled roof. Maybe this one has a parking garage. Oof, this is be a very big house. There we go. So this is kind of like um, carving a pumpkin. If you've ever carved a pumpkin where you're cutting out these, these relief shapes. I want this to sit up here. I'm going to do another leg on this one. Um, so you're cutting out all these relief shapes. And you can be doing this with a piece of paper. You don't have to be doing this with cardboard. You don't even have to cut them out as um, outlines if you don't want. You, you could do them um, as just pictures of the neighborhood. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this so that we can, uh, we can still play with light and shadow. All right. So I did a leg for this one as well. And if you have tape, right, I just, I'm just not using tape because I didn't say uh, to find some tape at the beginning and I want us all to be, uh, have the same materials. But you're going to have different materials than me. One, one person who's watching is going to have different materials than somebody else. And so now what we can do is we can turn on our light like before and just like um, night, when we, when we go out and we trick or treat, the, the lights would be down, right? It would, it would be kind of dark outside and check it out, right? Now we've got that scary night scene and we can take, uh, if we're, we're uh, playing in a box, if we've made uh, our, our neighborhood, we could make um, a character, a figure of ourselves and dress it up in the costume that we'd like to wear. And then we can go from door to door and Oh, yeah, we could go in front of the light. We could go behind the light. And if you had, oh, and grrr, monster wizard knocking down the, the, <laughs> the houses in your neighborhood, right? You could make up a story as you go along. The Halloween you stayed inside. The Halloween where your neighborhood was all turned into cardboard pieces, right? You could make up a story, and then once you've got your story and all your pieces all sorted out, you could ask um, a adult or a friend, or you could even uh, take some pictures of what you're of what you made or what you drew, and you could give a show of um, what it would be like to travel your neighborhood, um, trick or treating with uh, your little diorama. So there we go. Those are some different ways that we could play with a room with some light and make a uh, scary but fun scene for Halloween. <laughs>